Okay guys, so today I thought I would make things really simple when it comes to food by showing you just how easy it can be and what some of my favorite things to do quickly, easily, um, especially uh, appliances in my kitchen that I like to use. So my kitchen is kind of spread out, so I'll do the best I can to let you see everything that's going on, but I keep my crock pots, my blenders, and my instant pots, and my um, air fryers on the opposite side of my kitchen from where my prep surfaces are, where my stove, my sink, uh, my refrigerator are. Um, just because of the way our house is laid out, it's an old 1950s farmhouse and it's not conducive to um, easy access. So, um, so I went to the store and I picked up some things. Yay, we're super, super simple. So I am going to do a, week, a week's worth of dinners well, four days plus leftovers, uh, four separate meals, and then they can be reused and changed. And then I'm going to also do another video where I do some breakfast items. Um, so everything that I'm making is definitely paleo, mostly keto, all that's keto. And I'll explain the differences with carnivore as I go and uh, which things would need to be omitted. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, I bought hot Italian sausage, pork, uncured. Um, I bought, I love these, these sausages in my grocery store. They are a, uh, grass fed beef and jalapeno brat. Um, they are, or glossa, they are all, um, easy to find and don't have any nitrates or anything added to them. It's just neat. Um, so one thing I'm going to say, so for carnivore, if you are someone who has a lot of health issues and you are trying to isolate plant toxins by removing nightshades, anything in the pepper family. So my bell peppers, my jalapenos, um, I have pepperoncini peppers. I cook with a lot of peppers. It's one of the only vegetables I've actually reincorporated um, because I know that I don't have an issue with them. Um, so after I removed everything um, and went pure carnivore, animal products only, uh, then I started to put back the um, carnivore light things like your zucchini, your squashes, um, your olives, avocados, that kind of stuff didn't have any problems with that. What I did identify was that oxalates were an issue for me. Um, Sometimes sulforaphanes are an issue for me and um, brassica vegetables are sometimes an issue for me. So I don't do a lot of cauliflower. I don't do a lot of broccoli occasionally. I don't do a lot of potatoes. Um, I don't do a lot of kale or spinach, although I love them. I might have them once a month. Um, I avoid onions a lot because I do notice that I have a sensitivity to sulforaphanes, onions in particular, but being Italian, I've grown up cooking with onions and garlic, so that's hard to get used to, and there are still some times when I add onions for flavor. Um, but nightshades I reintroduced because I love peppers, I love spicy food, I love things hot, 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 and so lucky for me, I can love those things, and nightshades haven't been an issue for me, so a lot of the things you will see today, I do put peppers in. Um, and I'm gonna run through, um, so I'm gonna probably do a couple little videos so you can see it in stages, but I wanted you to see what I bought. Um, I usually use a company called Cleveland Kraut for my sauerkraut if I don't make it myself. Um, there's another company called Bubby's where I get my pickles from, um, and I do their kraut. Those are actually fermented. So be very careful when you buy pickles in the grocery store because if it's on a shelf in an aisle, it is not fermented, it is not okay to eat, that's not a pickle. So if you're not making them yourselves, you need to get one that is actually fermented. Bubby's is a good one. Um, there are a couple others. I found this silver floss today, gluten-free, non-GMO, naturally fermented, and it happened to be on sale. They were by Lego and Free, so I went with this one instead, but it's not usually the brand that I use, and I am a, a big fan of Cleveland Crown, and they make an awesome kimchi. Um, and they're from my hometown, so. Um, so meat wise, we have the jalapeno sausage, we have the hot Italian sausage, we have just some beef stew meat, 
And then we have some chicken breasts. Um, normally I cook with chicken thighs for, for this particular dish. I did breasts and I was going to do a thigh dinner too, except we're only going to be home for the three nights this week. And so I didn't want to cook too much food. Um, so, um, I'm going to show you how things pair. I also bought pepper and cheese and some sliced olives. You can use any kind. Um, the key to this is that the vinegar breaks down the fat in any kind of beef. So when I make a pot roast and it's a, a cheaper cut and it's got a lot of um, connective tissue in it, that's when I use um, vinegar to cook with because it's gonna break all that connective tissue down. So, so first things first, I'm gonna use the stew meat, the olives and the pepper and cheese and put that in a crock pot. At the very end, I'm going to add a, um, a little bit of beef stock and uh, possibly some mushrooms, maybe not. I'll taste it and see how I like it. That's gonna go into a crock pot, uh, yeah, a slow cooker, a crock pot. Um, the chicken, so I have three, three and a half to four pounds of beef, three and a half to four pounds of chicken. The chicken is gonna go with six bell peppers, different colors, um, and two bottles of Primal Kitchen unsweetened um, barbecue sauce. Now, again, if you're a carnivore, the barbecue sauce has tomatoes. Tomatoes are a nightshade. So we'll have to change that up for you. Um, but keto or paleo, these all work. Um, then we're going to move to the air fryer. And in the air fryer, I'm going to do the Italian sausage with more bell peppers and some onions in the air fryer. I love the air fryer. I cannot say enough about the air fryer. Uh, I just posted a picture of a dinner I made last week, which was a prime rib that I did in an air fryer. So let me tell you, I have three crock pots. I have three instant pots. Um, I have two air fryers, a smaller one, and then I have a huge one that actually fits a 20 pound turkey in it. And uh, that was what I made the um, prime rib in. So I almost never use my stove. I'm going to use it today when I do the breakfast things, but I literally never use my stove anymore. I set everything up, fix it, forget it, leave my house, come back and food is ready. That's how I like things. Um, this allows you to batch cook. This allows you to make things in advance. What I love about the Instant Pot is that I can set it to start while I'm gone and finish right before I get home. Unlike the air fryer where <clears throat> once I heat it up, I need it to cook. So I use different things depending on what my day looks like. So the crock pot is awesome because you could turn something on and low in the very morning before you leave. And when you get home from work at night, you have a meal. Um, so we're gonna do two of those. So, and then the other two are going to my air fryer. And then the breakfast one, like I said, is gonna go in the oven. So I will be back shortly. Okay, we are back. So in this first crock pot, I layered the bottom with nine chicken breasts. Then I julienne six peppers, bell peppers, all different colors, and I'm just gonna put those right on top. This is so, so, so stupid simple. Then that's how food should be. Simple and delicious. It doesn't take a lot of doctoring or a lot of crazy ingredients to make something taste good. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna salt it. You have to remember to salt all your food and salt your food well. Do not be afraid of salt. Sodium lowers blood pressure. It increases um, the heart's capacity to function and its strength because it is one of our four necessary electrolytes. <clears throat> Everything you eat should be salted. Here's the kicker, not iodized regular old table salt. You wanna use a pink Himalayan sea salt, ideally. Second best would be like a, a Celtic sea salt, but you want the gray one. You want it to be colored because when salt is white, it means that they have bleached out all the other micronutrients that were included with it. Um, I used two bottles of the classic barbecue unsweetened by Primal Kitchen. Most grocery stores have it now. I throw a little bit of water in there. Just to get the remnants out, you could throw a little bit of beef stock or chicken stock in there if you wanted to instead. I just wanted to add, get the little bits that are left in there out. So this is a fix it and forget it. This is 
exactly what you want on a weeknight when you're working or you've got to take the kids to practice. Um, so that's it, literally. Three ingredients, nothing else. We're going to set it on high for five hours or low for eight. I am also not, just so you know, you can see my dog laying on the ground. Um, I am not a recipe person. I wing it. I don't measure. I don't know how long it takes for things to cook. I don't know what temperature I cook them at. I just cook things and I eat them and they're wonderful. Don't overthink it. Simple food, delicious. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to put in this crock pot, this beef stew meat, three packages. Like I said, each one's just a little bit over a pound um so i am cooking for three of us um so whenever i cook anything i do a pound of meat per person um all of us i mean even my my kids are technically adults or teenagers um and they're all athletes so they need even more protein than than we do so keep in mind that it is a gram of protein per pound of body weight for most adults. If you are over 55 or you are a teenager and you're a competitive athlete, it can go up to one and a half grams per pound of body weight. So, um, so I average, depending on the person, um, so like the smallest person in my house is 120 pounds my youngest daughter the biggest person in our house is about 220 so i roughly make a pound per person for every meal and then it works out in the end that everybody gets about what they need some people have a pound some people have a little less three quarters of a pound um dinner is our biggest meal sometimes we only eat one meal and so then we need to eat two pounds um but usually we're two meal a day, uh, two meal a day family. The kids have lunch and dinner and I have a late breakfast and dinner. Um, what was it? Oh, in this one, we are doing, ah, oh, that's right. We're doing these. I need something to open this one. Um, and so now if you wanted to do a side with this, so vinegar and all, the entire contents of the pepperoncini bottle and the entire contents of the olive bottle. Um, if you wanted to use this like a stew and do it with a side dish, you could use spaghetti squash if you are low carb or carnivore. If you were just paleo, you could do any of those, but you could also do um, for keto, you could do riced cauliflower. Um, for paleo, you could do either. Um, if you are, well, that's going to complicate things, but if you are carnivore, but you need more carbs, uh, traditionally because of the amount of energy you expend, like you're a marathon runner or something along those lines, or you're doing Olympic lifting, um, then you could add organic white rice that has been twice cooked. So remember, you want to cook your organic white rice, drain it, refrigerate or freeze it, and then reheat it. That changes it to resistant starch, so it has a lower glycemic index. So that's meal two. Real simple. I'm going to prep the peppers and the onions for the air fryer, and we'll do that next. See you soon. Okay, so now I'm back with meal number three. So I laid out all the Italian sausages on the tray that goes inside my air fryer. So I'm going to do this in my big air fryer. If you have a smaller air fryer, it just goes straight into the basket. I layered on top of it the six julienne um, uh, peppers and two small onions. That's it. You can spray it with oil. I like to cook in the, in general with, uh, if I'm using a spray, I use this duck fat spray and I just spray it over on top, salt on top, and that's literally it. And then that's gonna go into the air fryer at 400 for about 30 to 35 minutes, and I'll just check it periodically and see. If I were to do this in my oven, I would do it at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. Um, the air fryer might cut it down to 20 minutes, I'm not sure, so we'll find out. 
Okay, so meal number four. So I'm gonna do this one in the Instant Pot. If you don't have an Instant Pot, you're missing out. I have one that is actually Instant Pot brand and I have two that are from Pampered Chef. I actually like the Pampered Chef one better. Um, for a number of reasons, it's just easier to use. But when I first bought my Instant Pot, it sat on a shelf for, uh, for like two years before I even attempted to use it. I had my first Kasori air fryer for probably a year before I tried to use it. And then once I started using it, I think it's intimidating sometimes to do something new when you already have a system. But once I started using both of them, they took over my kitchen. Now when I travel, I travel with them. I take at least one Instant Pot and my small air fryer with me and I stay in a condo so that I can cook food. We did this for my daughter's volleyball tournament last year. I cooked for the entire team every day for five and a half days using, I actually took two Instant Pots and one air fryer and two crock pots and we made every meal for the entire team and the families every night. So easy, saved us so much money and we knew that what they were getting was nutritious. So anyway, <clears throat> real simple. The Instant Pot is basically a pressure cooker. Um, it can act like a slow cooker so you can use it <clears throat> multitask. Um, there's so many things you can do in it. You can hard boil your eggs in here. I mean, literally, anything you can do with any other apparatus, you can do with this thing. So I'm putting four packages of these beef, uncured beef sausages um, in here. These are my favorite sausages. So it, I don't think anybody else in my family likes them quite as much as I do, but I don't care. Um, so those are going in here. And then all I'm gonna do is pour the sauerkraut on top and let them cook in the pressure cooker for like a half hour. Um, it's just another way to make it cook. Now you could do this in a Dutch oven, on top of the stove, in a pot, it doesn't matter. And because the sausages are pre-cooked, all you're doing is heating it up um, with the sauerkraut so that the flavor is infused. And sauerkraut is a cabbage, so it is a brassica, um, but it is fermented. And so the fermentation process um, is an ancient process used to remove plant toxins from the plants. So before the advent of the grocery store, before the advent of current agriculture, before all that, we had what is known as ancestral nutrition. And our ancestors knew that certain foods weren't able for them to be, weren't good for them to eat. And so what they did instead was they learned processing methods or cooking methods that reduced the toxicity level. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know why. They knew it made them feel not good. Fermentation is one of those ancient methods. Um, another is soaking and another is sprouting. So whether we're talking about beans or we're talking about grains, the only way that those are made edible is by soaking, sprouting, and fermenting. That takes a lot of time. And so modern agriculture and modern food has bypassed these ancient methods, making them unhealthy and unsafe. <clears throat> they were never intended to be eaten or consumed constantly like they are today anyway. So had we consumed more of them, they still would have made us sick in smaller quantities because of accumulation. But what we are eating today is not at all what we were eating hundreds of years ago. And so there's no comparison. You cannot say that that is the food my ancestors ate because it isn't. But if you really want to go back to ancestral tradition, then you need to go back to true fermentation, soaking for 72 hours before cleaning and then using those things like corn. Corn was soaked, rice is soaked, um, beans have been soaked, but for long periods of time to remove the lectins and the phytates. Um, fermentation uses salt, water, and thyme to create enzymes and those enzymes create good bacteria. So not only are fermented foods less toxic, they also now become probiotic. So now they're food for your gut microbiome. They help improve the intestine. They help improve the microbiome. They help improve immunity. So, <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna do in here is some fermented sauerkraut with our sausages. We're gonna throw that in the Instant Pot and that'll be ready real quick.
and then I still want to get these cups ready for you add this breakfast in here and um and we'll call it a day okay so last meal prep today I am going to make egg muffins or egg cups and there's a million different variations you can do for this a million different ways I wanted to do uh, these because I'd seen something similar and was like ah let's do that so anyway what I have is an uncured ham and it's going to go down and be like the cupcake liner and then I'm going to fill it with some diced vegetables you can use whatever you want um, so I'm just going to assembly line it put a whole bunch of these pieces of ham in here real fast. Um, I did spray it down a little bit with some coconut oil spray real fast just uh, to prevent it from sticking. And then we'll fill these up and then we'll put our eggs in. And these are a nice, quick, easy, they stay refrigerated. You grab them when you're on your way out the door, eat them in the car. Um, no fuss, no mess. Um, with the kids and sports for years and years, I've always looked for things that we could eat in the car, <laughs> which sounds terrible, but we're almost always in transition. So um, this was something that I used to make all the time for them before school. Um, now I don't even hardly see them before school, but they would have these on the way to school when they were in elementary school, middle school. Okay, so there's my whole package of ham, put my veggies in. Just a spoonful in each one. I'm just gonna crack the egg right over top. Let's see if I can turn this so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. That's so much better. Um, okay, so all of these have a little spoonful of veggies in them. Take my eggs from the backyard and crack an egg in each one. Now you could um, you can mix the eggs up and. They're more like omelets. Um, I actually like to leave the yolk whole. You break the yolk. You can pre-mix them and pour the egg mixture over whatever you want to do. I just wanted this to be as easy as humanly possible. As a little prep, as I can get away with. And then these are going to go in the oven. So I am actually going to use my oven for this one. Uh, at for the week before we head out of town so um, that's all I need is some grab-and-go stuff that'll last us for the next couple of days and that we can take with us to the airport or even on the plane Um, on these 
but normally I don't use a whole lot of pepper because pepper um, is a seed. So it is one of the things on the avoid list. Um, it also is in the nightshade family. Um, that's not why I avoid it. It's more because it's seed based. So all your seeds, like your grains, your nuts, your seeds, your grains, your legumes, all of those things are tend to be higher in phytic acid and in lectin. So um, I, when I cut out nuts and I cut out pepper, I noticed that I started to feel better. That's not going to be true for everybody, but you can find out by trying. So I don't, I run over there and get pepper. Actually, I have a little here, not the one I wanted, but, um, but that's the point is to experiment and listen to what your body tells you because your body knows what it needs. It knows what it wants and it is far smarter than you. So don't put your own bias on what you like or what you think you should eat. Forget everything you've ever been told before about what's healthy and what's nutritious and begin listening to the cues your body gives you. Your body is brilliant and it is broken because you got in the way and it fixes itself when you get out of the way. So everything that we do is really about you beginning to hear what your body's always been telling you, but you've been telling it to shut up and not listen. Your body feels gas, bloat, has a stomach ache, uh, you have joint pain, you have poor sleep because your body's telling you you're doing it wrong. So as you stop doing it wrong and you start listening to your body, it begins to repair itself. Let your body take over the process. That's when you're going to be successful. I'm going to stick all these videos together. I'm going to go ahead and post them for you. And maybe later, I'll put something together when they're all done so you can see what they look like. One thing I wanted to say on the chicken, I put the chicken breast in there whole, but you can shred the chicken at the end. Or you can cut it up, or you can leave it whole. It's totally up to you. Um, same with the sausages. I like sometimes to cut them into bite-sized pieces just so it's less work for me later. Um, right now they're roasting, so when they're done, then I would cut them up, put them back in with the veggies, and serve them like that. If you guys have any questions, post them in the comments. I look forward to them. You guys have a great day. Okay guys, now I am in the aftermath of my kitchen, but I wanted to show you what that looks like because I prepped all that stuff at two o'clock this afternoon. It's five o'clock, everything is done, packaged, and about to be put in the refrigerator. And um, I wanna show you the results. So I ended up with uh, three pieces of sausage each and sauerkraut. Um, I made one, two, three, four, five. Uh, of the jalapeno kielbasa and sauerkraut. Then there are three, I'm even trying to move this, three of the, this is the um, Italian sausage with peppers and onions. These two plastic containers right here contain um, the egg bites. I ended up making two, two, two and a half dozen, three different types. So I did ham lined with eggs and vegetables and then I did a uh, ham lined with eggs vegetables and oh no I did ham lined with sausage and egg no vegetables and then I did ones that were not ham lined but I put sausage on the bottom and then vegetables and then egg and so we ended up with three different kinds <clears throat> and those were there and there were three that didn't fit in the Tupperware container so they're going in a little plastic baggie um the next stack here these are my barbecue chicken. So I ended up shredding the chicken breast. I divided it um, basically about two and a half breasts per uh, container with, and then put the peppers and the, um, the remaining sauce that had cooked down in there. And then the very last pile here, these are really hot because I just took them out of the crock pot. That was the beef. Um, and I put in there the pepper and cheese and the olives. So, and then cooked it for 
I don't know, uh, about four and a half hours on high on my, in my crock pot. And so it smells super yummy. I'm missing a, uh, I'm missing a little locking thing on here. Well, now I gotta find the piece to my Tupperware container. Okay, so anyway, these are, I say Tupperware, these are glass containers that we buy. We store all the food in glass. Um, oh, it's pouring. Um, so real simple, real quick, real tasty. I did taste the Italian sausage and the peppers. I did taste the kibasi, the jalapeno kibasi and sauerkraut. I did taste the chicken. The only thing I didn't taste is the beef because frankly, I'm full and I can't taste any more food. I'll have some later. Um, everything was yummy, super yummy. Now I have to wash all the dishes. But also easy. Things I will say, um, based on timing, I did 25 minutes in the air fryer on the sausages and I would do less. Like I said, in the stove, I usually do 45 minutes. Um, 25 minutes was way too much for the sausages. Um, the sausages I put in the Instant Pot I probably would do in the air fryer. The thing about doing them in the Instant Pot because it is a pressure cooker is um, they're super tender. So what I ended up doing was putting it in the Instant Pot, turning it on like it was going to cook, letting it pressurize, and then immediately stopping it when it got to pressure and not actually cooking it at all. Um, because just it heating up was enough to heat everything thoroughly. And we were done. So that literally only took a couple of minutes. Um, anything else I would change? Not really. Um, with the egg cups, there's always a little bit of remnant egg in the muffin pans. So if you really wanted to use like a, an actual muffin paper cup, it would make it neater. Um, it would make cleanup easier, but it's not necessary. But you will have a little bit of waste um, when you do it without I think that's it. I think that's everything. And I hope that that shows you that it's real easy to cook meals for the week for your family. You can take these things to lunch. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be time consuming and it doesn't have to lack flavor. Um, but it can be real food made at home real easy. And that's how you succeed. I hope that this was helpful and let me know if there's anything else I can do.